Good morning again. Thank you for joining us for our small group study at Leatherwood Baptist Church on Sunday morning. Uh, I hope that this is a blessing to you. I pray that you are encouraged and that uh, you will grow in your relationship with God because of our study. We're still in the book of Proverbs. We have about two more lessons, this lesson and one more that we will be doing and then we'll start a new study in the month of September, if I'm not mistaken. But today we're in Proverbs chapter 29, verse number one through verse number three, verse number 12 through verse number 20. The title of our lesson is Accepting Discipline. The subtitle is God Uses Discipline from Society, Family, and others to shape his people. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again for loving us. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the day. God, you've been so good to us, and we just cannot thank you enough for all that you are doing. And pray, Father, that our time together will be a blessing. It will be an encouragement. It will be uh, of help to those who are listening those that are saved, that they will grow in their relationship with you. That person that's not saved, that we could say something that will encourage them to receive Christ as their personal Savior. Thank you again for loving us and all that you do. We love you. God, you're so wonderful to us. And we thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Proverbs chapter 29, beginning with verse number 1 through verse number 3. And then we will drop down to verse number 12, down through verse number 20. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Now drop down to verse number 12. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful man meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The rod and reproof giveth wisdom, but a child left to himself <clears throat> bringeth his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. A servant shall not be corrected by words, but though he understand, he will not answer. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. As we begin our time together, I want to read something that came out of the lesson. It's a paragraph that I thought would be very helpful for us to get an understanding of what we we're going to be talking about in our time together. Here's what it says. Too often... We view discipline as a penalty rather than a benefit. But when we say no to one thing, we are saying yes to something else. The athlete says no to unhealthy food, so he can say yes to finishing a marathon. The farmer says no to prolonged naps at harvest time, so he can say yes to ingathering the harvest. Living with discipline puts us in the position to flourish spiritually and relationally. Let's be honest with ourselves this morning. We do not like to be disciplined. We like to do things our way without, without interference from others, telling us what we should or should not do. As a child, I certainly did not cherish the times that my parents had to discipline me. As a parent, I did not relish having to discipline my only child. Let me give you an illustration of that because 
it came to my mind as I was going through this lesson. I remember on one occasion when I had to discipline my only son. And uh, back in those days, you know, people today, they don't believe in spanking, but we did back then. I had many spankings when I was growing up. And so on this particular day, I really felt in my heart he deserved a spanking for what he had done. And so just before that I was to spank him, uh, I looked at him and I said, Son, uh, this is going to hurt me more than you. He looked up to, at me with his sad eyes, and this is what he said. You probably have heard this, but this is, this is what he said. He said, Dad, I don't think so. Uh, but the disparate moment that I took for him at that time was necessary in order to mold him into the person that he would become. And I'm thankful that I took the time to discipline my son, but I'm also thankful that God gave me wisdom enough not only to discipline him, but to instill in him the ways of God. And I can say for my son that today he is doing the very same for his children. He disciplines them, but he also instills in them the wisdom of God. In fact, uh, we have spent some time with them, maybe stayed a few days and uh, spent nights with them, and each night he would call the family together. Uh, he would read scripture, he would share from the word of God, and then they would have prayer together. And this was, uh, would take place every night, probably somewhere around 7 or 7.30. He would simply tell them, he said, at this time you are to do nothing but come to the living room. We're going to have our family time, we're going to have prayer time, we're going to have a reading of the scriptures. And so he was instilling in them the wisdom of God but again, uh, he would discipline his, uh, his children. Now, this holds true as well uh, for the believer. There are times that God must discipline us in order to mold us into the person that he wants us to become. It's not because uh, he is angry or mad or hates us, but it is cause, because that he wants the best for you. So, therefore, he has to sometimes discipline us as his children. Now, there's four things that I want to bring to your attention as we go through this study. First of all, believers are to grow in righteousness, learning from any discipline received in the past. You see that in verse number one through verse number three. We'll go back to those verses in just a moment. The second thing is that God's wisdom is available to all people. We will Look at verse number 14 and verse number 15. The third thing is that parents are to discipline their children, teaching them God's wisdom. That's seen in verse number 15 through verse number 17. And then finally, God's word provides a basis for determining wise action. Verse number 18 through verse number 19. Now then, let's look at each one of these for just a moment or two. Uh, first of all, believers are to grow in righteousness, learning from any discipline received in the past. Go back to verse number one through verse number three. Let's read those verses again. He that being often reproved, hardeneth neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked, wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. The, whoso loveth wisdom rejoices his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Now, basically what that is saying is that if we're going to grow into the person that we're supposed to be, or spiritually, then there are times, again, that discipline must take place uh, in our lives. And it is to help us to grow in righteousness. It's help, it helps us to grow uh, into being conformed into the image of Christ. Now, I don't think that any of us can truthfully say that we have not made mistakes. We certainly have. And there has probably been times in your life or maybe in my life that maybe we have disobeyed God. That is, we just continued in our disobedience and God said, okay, I have warned you time and time again 
now I must discipline you in order that you can get back on track of being the person that I want you to be. And so uh, he disciplines us. Uh, and if we don't change our ways, he has to discipline us. And it is uh, in order for us to get back on track and continue on that road, if you will, that path of becoming the person that God wants us to be. And so we can learn, we can grow in righteousness when God does have to discipline us. And so believers are to grow in righteousness, learning from any discipline received in the past. We learn valuable lessons when we falter and fail and God has to discipline us. Hopefully we're going to learn some lessons through that and that's going to help us tremendously. The second thing is that God's wisdom is available to all people. Now go back to verse number 14 and verse number 15 of our text. He says, the king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Now, he's talking, first of all, about uh, the rulers of that day. In Solomon's day, the ruler, the king, uh, had the power to influence uh, the people. The people didn't have anything uh, to say about what the king said. That was the rule. That was the rule of law, if you will, please. And so the king, hopefully, and there are occasions in the Bible that we find several occasions uh, in the uh, history of the nation of Israel that the kings uh, did not do what they were supposed to do. In other words, they listened to the wrong people. And as a result of that, the people as a whole suffered. But Solomon was one of those that listened to God. He had some wise individuals, some wise counselors. And so that helped him tremendously. But again, the ruler, uh, the king of that day, he ruled the people and the people had no say, uh, but the ruler was to seek wise counsel from those who would listen to God. And if he would do so, which was wisdom, uh, and here again, we can see that wisdom is available to all people. It's available to leaders. It's available to me. It's available to you. And so if the ruler of that day, whether it was Solomon or anyone else that was king, if they would listen to God, then it was well for the people. But if not, the people would be harmed and maybe they would even rebel <clears throat> against the king. The third thing that I want us to notice is found in verse number 15 and verse number 17 is that parents are to discipline their children, teaching them God's wisdom. Okay, look at verse number 15 through verse number 17. The rod and reproof give wisdom. We've already read this verse, but I'll read it again. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Now, I think we all understand that there are moments there are times that we do have to discipline our children. I had to do that when my son was growing up. He has to do that even now. You may be listening and you have children that you know that you have to discipline. There's different measures of discipline uh, that we, we use our children. But one thing that we need to understand, that disciplining a child should never lead to abuse of that child. I remember on one occasion, my son was telling me that he had to discipline one of his children and he had to use some harsh measures. It was a spanking, but he was upset at the moment and he told that child, he said, look, we will deal with this later. I'm too upset to deal with that because he knew that if he did it at that moment, he possibly could abuse a child. And that was not him. That was not his his character. So discipline a child should never lead to abusing the child. Verse 15, the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left himself bringing this mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, uh, multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give he shall give delight unto thy soul. So there is that discipline that needs to be uh, used uh, in regard to our children. And it should be done in love. All discipline should be done in love. Because 
Here again, when we discipline our children in love, we're following the example that God has given us that he disciplines us, his children, in love. <clears throat> and at the same time, as we discipline our children, we should impart to them the wisdom of God. Here's the fourth thing. We see this in verse number uh, 18 through verse number 19, that God's word provides a basis for determining wise action. Look at verse number 18 and verse number 19 again. He said, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Uh, so you see, when he's talking about keeping the law, uh, that, that no doubt refers back to the law that was given uh, to the children of Israel. And when he says, where there is no vision, the people perish. That has to do with the fact that, that those that maybe are leading uh, the people at that particular time, they have no vision of what God wants for the people. That is, they are not adhering uh, to the things uh, that are found in the law. He says, verse number 19, a servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. So what we see here, if we look at it very carefully, is that the word of God is the standard which all human conduct and opinion should be tri tried. Let me try to give you an example of, uh, of a standard. I do woodworking. And so I have a tape measure. I have other tools that I use. And that tape measure, I use it for measuring. Uh, it has inches. It has feet on it. And so uh, I follow that standard. When I measure something, the standard is in either in inches or feet. Now, my father taught me one thing. He was a carpenter. He taught me one thing. He said, son, you measure twice and you only have to cut once. There have been times that I measured once and I've had to cut several times because I didn't follow the standard. So we, uh, we had to follow the standard. And of course, the standard again is God, God's word and is the, uh, it determines the, or should be used as determining our human conduct and our opinion. Then second of all, faith and trust in God's word is demonstrated through obedient action. That's just pointed out if you look at verse number 19 very carefully. So when we look at the word of God, and we were receiving the wisdom of God, then what we're supposed to do, what we're, we, we ought to do is to put that into action. That's demonstrating our faith and our trust in God's word. Now, here is a few closing thoughts. And the point of our lesson is very, very clear. There are times that God, uh, in his love, must discipline his children. It is not, again, because he hates us and not because he's mad at us, but he, he has disciplined us in order to mold us into the person that he desires for us to become. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Are you a child of God? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you do not, you can know him by simply doing what Paul says in Romans chapter 9, verse number 10 and verse number 13. And we have talked about this before that thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that the Lord Jesus Christ, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. So you can be saved if you will follow what is taught in the scripture about you confessing and receiving Christ as personal Savior. The second thing is, if you are a child of God, understand this that God wants the best for you. And sometimes, here again, he must discipline you. He must discipline me, not because he hates me, not because he hates you, but because he loves us and he wants the very best for us. And so when we get out of line, when we are not doing what he wants us to do, he has to discipline us. Uh, thank you again for coming. Let's pray together. Uh, Father, thank you for loving us. Uh, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the time together. Uh, may this be used for the honor and the glory of God. I thank you for those that have listened week after week. Thank you so much for them. And I pray that you would bless in their lives. Forgive us of our sins. Use us to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now don't forget, uh, coming up at 9 o'clock, uh, Brother Mike 
uh, and our praise team will be live streamed from our sanctuary. If you cannot come and be with us, then join us during that time uh, at 9 o'clock, and you will be blessed. Also, on which now I will mention this quickly, uh, Brother Bray is doing uh, the story of Joseph, and you want to join that uh, on Wednesday night. Thank you. God bless you. It's my prayer. Even when the rain falls.